Hey folks, welcome to the second custom lesson. This was a loadout requested by, and my apologies, I know I'm totally going to butcher this, uh, Kahan Boskort? Yeah, sorry. This person requested to see a mobility build involving sword and either dual swords or spear, so I decided to pick dual swords. Soul cores requested are Enki, Magatsu, and any other soul core with a dodge capability. Garden spirits are up to me, and then the enemies are either Shibata or Okutakemaru. So I picked the following guardian spirit, Kuruma Tengu. Why? Honestly, the only reason is just because dodging capability, dodge key consumption, that was it. That's literally it. This is not like the optimal guardian spirit to pick by any means, but I figured I'd showcase something new almost every time. Now with this Magatsu Warrior, I would say one of the most important stats to get is this. Anima Charge Bonus AA. Get that for cumulative damage as high as you can because it's super good. The one thing that is suboptimal in terms of my Guardian Spirit and Soul Core choice is simply that this charge bonus and this charge bonus are in the same category and the amount they stack is effectively negligible. Um, you don't necessarily want to have the same stats stack at least with the letter grades. And let me actually see if I can showcase it to you over here and I'll point it out. Um, where is, all right, so anima charge bonus, cumulative damage AA plus. So we go from AA to AA plus. That's like nothing. It's like not that big of a deal. So it would certainly be more optimal if I were to put Magatsu Warrior on either a Phantom Core or a Brute Core, just for that reason, because it's really helpful to have a variety of different anima charge bonuses and anima bonuses so that you can have a great amount of anima generation period. So that's just one thing to note. But other than that, I'm with the bonus, inflict electrified. I don't think I do it a single time. So this is just extra. Um, life drain yokai ability hit is really nice, but not really necessary. And yokai ability key pulse, I strongly recommend no matter what. On at least once per your guardian spirit. Uh, next up, I have Enki. I just took the feral Enki I had in my inventory and that's it. Um, I would recommend getting anima bonus damage taken upgraded just because more anima generation the better. And then I already have yokai ability key pulse and all these values are more or less unimportant. Um, Epon I actually picked very specifically for dodging capabilities which I will get to momentarily. But the premium stat here is simply this, another anima charge bonus. You don't necessarily have to have this one. I find that this one's really awesome, specifically if you keep your gauge full for a long period of time. But even if you don't, it's a separate anima charge bonus, which can only help in us generating a lot of anima. And then the rest is entirely luxury. So if you can get this or some other anima bonus that you like, go for it. Now let me actually showcase why I picked Epon for its dodging capability. So while it does stagger and is really fast, there is one other thing I want to show you that it can avoid. So let's get this enemy low on health. Alright, come on. I think you're going to get pretty low, right? Should be pretty low now. Excellent, okay. You know how he's going to do a grab, right? You can avoid grabs. Now it's not just by the nature of hopping. I want you to pay very close attention to the sound. Did you hear how there was almost like a connect, but yet Epon straight up just neglected it? So bear that in mind. Um, there are many, many, many soul cores which straight up will avoid grabs for various reasons. Um, you might think it has to do with transformations, but that's not the case. You can get grabbed with Mogatsu Warrior and stuff like that. So. I just wanted to inform you that there are a variety of soul cores which can effectively nullify grabs. I will list in the description below what soul cores do do that. I'll link a document, something like that. So definitely check it out and that can help you plan out all sorts of loadouts. But let's just again mention why Epon is so awesome besides stagger. It's really good in the key damage department and it can break horns as well. So. It does cost quite a bit, but it is really awesome. And I find that having a quick, reliable source of key damage can kind of compensate for the lack of the best key damage tools when it comes to the sword and dual sword. So sword pretty much just has kick, right? And kick is okay, 
but it's really not too impressive compared to say other weapons. Um, dual Swords pretty much exclusively has God of Wind, which is your bread and butter ability for this weapon, which is quite good. But Epon complements that, and then Enki actually complements that quite handily. So Enki can do a lot of range key damage. In addition, you can avoid many attacks as well with it, just because you're in the air. Not that though. <laughs> But that does highlight actually one thing I wanted to mention when it comes to um, Enki and Soul Cores in general. You do need to be quite mindful of their hitboxes. So, when it comes to cores like Mogatsu, you, you, it's kind of obvious, hey, if I'm getting hit, I'm on the ground, yeah, I expect to take damage. But with Enki, there is a bit of a startup time for you will avoid certain attacks and you know and it can be very frustrating when your feet get clipped so be sure to plan your enkis a little more in advance and with epon this isn't necessarily the case for whatever reason because you pretty much get in the air almost instantly and you stay in the air for quite a while which is what makes epon really handy not only for avoiding grabs but also for many attacks that have horizontal sweep elements, whether they're like ground-based ice slams or something like that. Ipon can be really nice. Uh, Enki can as well, but there's a bit more of a wind-up to Enki. So you have ranged key damage options and close-range key damage options, which both have evasive properties. And if you just need a massive pressure play, Mogatsu is absolutely your friend. And in addition to being a great pressure play, if you have things like life recovery on Amrita Absorption, uh, get over here. Life recovery on Amrita Absorption, then using Magatsu against enemies who on, with low key, specifically yokai who are out of key, can be awesome. Pair that with Extraction Talisman, and it's pretty ridiculous. Let me showcase that uh, once more. I'm just going to deplete key. All right, that's fine. All right, watch. Look how look at all those little bits of Amrita that you are seeing be generated. It's pretty ridiculous. So if you go for the super risky tier with Magatsu, which already generates a ton of Amrita as it is, it can be especially nutty to work in a quick source of life regeneration. They're pretty cool. But now I want to get on to the second Guardian Spirit that I decided to mess around with. So. While I was requested to have a lot of dodge capabilities and high mobility, I actually went almost an entirely different route, which was, what if I don't want to play that way at all? What if, in fact, I want to just power through stuff and I'm okay with taking damage? That's why I picked Inososao as a brute spirit to complement uh, the weaknesses that ferals have against many attacks. So, for this setup, I picked Mezuki, Namahage and Kinky. These are overall fairly long animations, but they're huge power plays in their own right. They do cost quite a bit of anima as well, so you do kind of have to plan with your anima, so that's why I have an anima bonus grapple on this Mezuki, another anima charge bonus, and even more anima bonus grapple. Anytime you can get these anima bonuses back to back, that's great. Get as many as you can. You can't go wrong having extra anima. So when it comes to Mezuki, this is a massive damage power play. It is remarkable and should not be underestimated at all. Namahage is very good for zero key sorts of situations. That's even suggested by the special effects with melee damage versus a zero key enemy. Um, this anima charge bonus is fantastic. And then Kinky, the bonuses are, they're cool. I mean, yeah, you got barehanded attack damage. Uh, damage taken is nice, so if you want to boost that, go for it. But it is ultimately just about memeing your targets. And let me just show you the value of these cores all together against, say, a human opponent. So watch what happens if I do a back wave, or not even just a back wave, but Mezuki just clobbered up that enemy's key. All right? And it has a huge range, and it staggers. This is awesome. Boom! Isn't that beautiful? So yeah, definitely, it, it's a lot of fun. 
And if you pair it with the brute. Oh, come on. It can be pretty rad. So try that out. Now, when it comes to Namahage and Kinky, well, Kinky can be used as its own thing for some stagger and just, you know, people's elbow, right? Now, let me showcase how Namahage can work well just on its own. Assuming I can break the horn. Come on, break the horn, please. That's fine. It's a pretty good zero key punisher, but I was I was actually hoping to showcase it when the enemies just needs to be depleted to max key being zero as opposed to just being completely out of key from the get go. All right, let's deplete the key. All right, now oh come on. All right, let's deplete that key, and then let's use Namahage. Pretty good, huh? So it's definitely good as kind of like a finisher soul core of sorts. And it can be really handy. But against human opponents, this is a little different. Because they can't usually handle yokai abilities at all. But I find it especially handy when they're already out of key. Come on, let's get you out of key. They so can keep a zero key combo going. It feels extra exquisite. Of course, you've got kinky for hilarity purposes and knockdown and whatnot. But it can be a lot of fun to mix and match these elements together. So now let me showcase some yokai shift things you can do before I show you how to work with the whole package. So Epon is a pretty good bread and butter key damage ability, but if you're at range, you can always use Enki. So let's do yokai shift. And then here's what I want you to pay attention to. Guardian Spirit Talisman. Epon to keep the target there for purity. And you can use Magatsu as a nice finisher play from there. It can be pretty cool. So one extra thing when it comes to Feral Yokai Shift is when you use a Guardian Spirit Talisman, wait until it actually starts. Like don't, like wait for the Guardian Spirit to actually come out. So when your feet kind of touch the ground, don't try to cancel it beforehand. Don't just like quickly do Guardian Spirit into a cancel because you just won't use the Guardian Spirit Talisman whatsoever. So make sure you wait for the animation and once you see it begin to play out, then use a Soul Core. So I like using the Guardian Spirit Talisman into an E-Bone so I can guarantee that Purity Tornado will actually connect. And then you can charge up and attack when you're in close range. Use that. And then of course, if you want to play evasive, you can always use Enki, which can feel pretty cool. And it's definitely very powerful. One thing I want to touch about with Feral Yokai Shift, which I don't believe I've mentioned, is you know how you can do, you can just spam this combo and over and over again, right? And you do have Shadow Step, which is just dodge to cancel stuff out, right? Now one interesting thing, which I don't think is explicitly discussed, is that you can, after attacks, you know, dodge away, but still keep the chain going if you just make sure to time things right. See how it's still doing the full thing there? So it can be pretty nice. Mix in an Enki every now and again. So definitely really cool. Now, when it comes to uh, the Brute Guardian Spirit, that's where I actually had a lot of fun messing around with this. So let me showcase this um, just very briefly. There's some really funny combos that I was able to pull off utilizing uh, Ino Sasao. So I just want to showcase this to you. And they all kind of revolve around a theme. So let's deplete the max key first and then transition into Yokai Shift. Alright, let's get that key down. Let's do it again. Alright, let's pop Yokai Shift. And then here's something cool Guardian Spirit, alright? Into Kinky. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Bonk. Beautiful. I love it. So let me showcase it again. Ino Sasao functions like that. So it charges and you just follow suit. Bonk. It's so good. Another thing you can do. You can do, oh, not that. I wasn't trying to do the fang break. Actually, it's, <laughs> I'm trying to do the charge attack. You can do a charge attack and you can get Mezuki for some super serious power. So you could do, again, this into that. 
Usually a target will get staggered or knocked down. Um, you can even follow that up for Namahage. Um, you can charge up, follow that up for Namahage. And so it just feels like very thematic to have that motion sense going. And it can be a lot of fun, so definitely try that out. Now let's showcase the whole package with the soul cores and the weapon play. So one thing I would say to transition between sword and dual swords is to get familiar with sheet swaps. Really handy. You have four different quick draw options. So you've got just sign of the cross, you've got tiger sprint, you've got night rain, and quick draw of course. Now with these abilities, don't forget you can do half sort of uncharged versions of them to have different variety when it comes to all sorts of play. So you need to get comfortable with that. That's one of the biggest things I think will assist you very much so when it comes to just using the weapons. And now when it comes to weapon play, in addition to soul cores, you've got quite a few options for massive pressure. Very nice. Oh, I guess I highlighted the weakness of Namahage there, which is you want to have just a little distance. So God of Wind into Namahage is quite good. For that reason. Kinky don't care though. Which can make it extra hilarious. Now let's show this against a Yoki. So again, sheet swaps, maintaining a little distance with certain key pressure routines can be awesome. Mix in a Yokai shift, because why not? And look at that, isn't that quite beautiful? Transition to a different form. And it's dead. If it was still alive. Once it gets staggered, charge up. Now I can do regular attacks. And throw in Namahage. So you've got a lot of forward momentum, a lot of pressure, even if the weapons don't necessarily work as well with that. So... You'll see me do all sorts of weapon swaps very frequently so I can make sure to adapt to the situation as I need to. And if I need to take a break, I'll utilize a soul core nonetheless. And it can feel extra special when you mix everything in together. So a very powerful combination. In any case, I think that's a good enough of a demonstration for now. Let's get up to some gameplay. So I will see you guys in a bit. All right, it's time for the straight up gameplay. I pick a Scroll of the Damned with Aizai Nagamas and Shibata Katsui. So let's get right to it. He always opens up the same way. I'm just using my Jitsu. And then all I got to worry about when it comes to this bird boy is just that deflecto attack. And so my objective is simply to try to apply extra key damage, but I'm not really that concerned about Bird Boy over here. He is overall one of the slower enemies in general, so there isn't too much I need to do. And for the most part, I'm just doing God of Wind, get that key damage in place, and then when I needed my life back, I just used Mogatsu, which was really handy. And I'm taking advantage of those Sheath Swamps in order to get some quick sources of damage, and then, as you can see, I'm trying to deplete his key as often as I can. Enki helps quite a bit because there are many moments where you can't really engage with Azai as much as you'd like. Um, Feral, of course, helped me there. Ebon helped me there for some quick key damage. And then I'm just trying to apply as much pressure as I can with the various sheathed attacks. And then Mizuki gets a big clobber off, which is pretty handy. And then I just kind of remember that when Azai does his deflect wing, which is make sure to dodge instead of trying to block it right after his parry that is but yeah it's pretty easy against this guy but enough about him the main course is shibata who's purple so they take yeah they're pretty crazy but for the most part i am sticking behind shibata i'm interrupting him quite a bit with ipon which helps a lot um, purple enemies in general take less key damage so it is very important that I can deplete that key as quickly as I can so I can remove the curse so I can have an easier time. Uh, but there's again the value of the sheath swaps, the quick sheath uncharged attacks that I've talked about so that you can get a lot of pressure. And then 
trying to apply corruption, which I have, so that I can just, again, beat him down. And you'll see I try to go for a kinky play in terms of depleting that max key. I was unsuccessful, unsuccessful. Um, and I am actually kind of playing a little safer. I'm not being super crazy in terms of trying to break that horn, which admittedly, if you break Shibata's horns as he's charging at you, you actually get a huge punish window. So instead, I'm being, I'm being a little safer. So you can just see that over and over again. Sheet swaps, uncharged sheet attacks, constant pressure plays, and now I use Namahage to help me clinch a bunch of pressure. Uh, this was more of a thematic thing where I eventually decide to use Inosasao, but it's fire, which doesn't really work too well. But yeah, I'm not really paying attention to dodging as much. I'm just trying to rapidly deplete as much key as I can. Um, I even do the combo there. You get a fang break off and then bonk Mezuki for the clutch transition into Feral. So here, I think I create a little bit of distance. Koruma Tengu Ippon, yep, just to keep it in place, but I ran out of the gauge. But at least the target is purified, so I can keep going from there. Now there are attacks that I could use to deal with uh, Shibata's horn charge, but I decided not to this time, which is unusual. Nonetheless, let's just keep depleting the key as I can, because that's one of the weaknesses I felt that sword and dual swords can kind of have, and with the purple enemy, it's really important that I take advantage of that. All right, so I'm just creating my distance when he's doing Deadly Spiral, hopping over, trying to stick behind him, because Shibata does commit to animations a lot. And then, as you can see, I use that Namahage in order to get a ton of max key damage off when he's low on key. Mezuki does a good chunk of damage anyway. Um, keep in mind, purple enemies have a ton more health, so Mezuki is a massive power play. And then there's, I think, the first burst uh, attack I have successfully countered. Got that corruption off because a double-headed slice is really good for applying elements. And then let's see, I'm actually a little hesitant. I was deciding whether I should use an elixir, and then I was like, yeah, let's not. <laughs> so <laughs> that was pretty handy. Let's see what I go for here. Yeah, quick disengage with Swallow's Wing, and then Enki for some more key damage. Sticking behind Shibata, depleting that key so I can make sure I keep, can keep the pressure going. Try to use Random Slice to some effect. It didn't work as well as I had hoped but I'm basically controlling the pace of the fight by constantly being on the move and then when I need to really be in the thick of things using all sorts of pressure plays whether it be Mezuki for some strong damage whether it be Ippon for pressure at close range Enki for long range pressure and then to finish things off I use either Namahage or Kinki in order to get all sorts of key damage so Kinky didn't work as well as I wanted to, but it was very, very close there. All right, let's see what's happening here. Oh God, am I gonna die? Nope, I avoided that grab because I dodged to the side. And now I'm just strictly trying to deplete the key, which I did. And let's finish it up with the Feral Funsies, which I wasn't able to tap into before. Charge attack, and let's finish this up. Yeah, look at that. Oh, goodbye Purple Shibata, you did not stand a chance. So. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to see more sorts of custom lessons, let me know and I'll be happy to take you through it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.